The top piece of advice I can give you to make your writing better is to get more specific, to name things. It's true in telling stories, it's true in comedy, it's true in any kind of art, and it certainly is true in writing. And there is a punctuation device out there, the dash, that will help encourage you to push things from staying general to getting more specific. So let's start with that, a dash. What is it? Do you have any idea? Take a moment and write down a sentence that includes a dash. And then put that aside and we'll see if in this tutorial what you've written is true and all the rules are correct or if there's a thing or two to learn about dashes. And now that you've written a sentence, take a moment and think what is the rule for dashes and any kind of observations you can make about what they look like, about spacing, that sort of thing. Let me start the explanation here with a couple of sentences, one of which has a colon and the other has a series of dashes, two dashes. In both sentences, there is a list. The first one comes at the end. I am going to the store to buy some food, bread, eggs, and milk. But it's possible to take that list and to insert it in the middle of a sentence. At the store, I'll buy some food, bread, eggs, and milk that we'll eat tonight. The sentence continues after the dash. In the first one, the, the list comes at the end of the sentence. There's a period and that's it. In the second one, there's an interruption of the sentence and the sentence continues. Now let's get a bit more detailed about it. Now I'm going to go over the rules for how dashes are used primarily. There is a little bit of an exception I'll get to later on. All right, the first point is use a dash to set off a list or a restatement that interrupts a sentence. We just saw that with the bread, milk, eggs example, and here are two more. My visits to some European capitals, Paris, London, Rome, have made me more sophisticated. Okay, you see how the dash here and here, they are the interruption of the sentence that starts here and continues over here. So we're interrupting the sentence to give more details, a list or a restatement. The second example, everything that went wrong from the burnt toast to the head-on collision was blamed on the full moon. Once again, a list or a restatement, in this case here, is set off from the main sentence. It is interrupting the sentence. It is opening up the curtain, sticking its head through there, and then putting the curtain back as the sentence continues and finishes. Second point, usually a general word comes before the dash and then inside the dash are examples or specifics for that word. Okay, and the one we have down here, here is capitals, European capitals, that's the general word. And then inside the dash are these examples, are these specifics. Same over here. Everything that went wrong, well here is the general word, everything, and then we name them. You see how much better the writing is? The burnt toast, the head-on collision, rather than simply saying everything that went wrong was blamed on the full moon. No, we're naming them. So once again, the general word is before, and then inside the dash are specifics. And the third point is that if you took the dash out and all the material within the dash, the sentence would flow smoothly from the first part into the second part. Remember, dashes are interrupting the sentence. So look down here. My visits to some European capitals, well, if we took the dash stuff out completely, took it out, my visits to some European capitals have made me more sophisticated. Yeah, a complete smooth sentence. Same with the next one. If we took out the burnt toast and the collision, just took it out completely, we would have everything that went wrong, smoothly flowing over here, was blamed on the full moon. So that's what a dash is. It sets off a list that interrupts a sentence. Usually there's a general word 
before the dash and then inside our specifics, our examples. And then if you took that dash out, the sentence would flow smoothly from the first part into the next part. Now there is another use for a dash and that is when you are using it for a striking shift in tone. And in that case, often it's at the end of a sentence. Like in this example, Stefan took a few steps back, came running full speed, kicked a muddy kick, and missed the ball. All right, so there's a striking shift in tone. The dash really emphasizes that. Now let's move on to some nuts and bolts, like how do you even make a dash, and what about spacing? All right, as for how to make it, a dash is made up of two hyphens that form a dash your computer will automatically convert those two hyphens into one long dash. Here's how it works. And to do this, I will type a sentence. The stuff in my desk, and I want a dash, there's a hyphen, there's a hyphen, and look what happens when I type the next word. Pens, see, automatically converts to a long line. The stuff in my desk, pens, I should have a space there, pens, pencils, erasers, brilliant sentence, right? Hyphen, hyphen, to come out of the dash, are all bothering me. All right, you see what happens there? The dash is made up of two hyphens that automatically becomes a longer line, becomes a dash when you are typing on Microsoft Word. So notice in all these instances, here, here, or the previous examples, that this is a longer line. It is two hyphens. And just to make the point, here is a hyphen. That is a device that connects two words acting as one adjective. So it definitely is not a dash. It's a completely different beast. And also notice that there are no spaces before or after the dash. And to look in more closely here, you can see no space, no space. Okay, now a few words on the craft of using dashes, beginning with the placement. Now usually, as in most of the examples we've had so far, here's the general word, and then right next to it is the dash. dash, dash. But it doesn't have to be that way. I'll show you some variations on it. But before we do that, you give it a try. Write your own sentence with a dash. Have the general word here. And then the dash. The general words. The dash. And then come out of the sentence. Or come out of the dash, resuming the sentence. All right, you give that a try. Now the placement can come a few words away from that dash. Like here, every device we owned, that's the general word. And then we have a couple of word gap in here and then the dash. Every device we owned, attic fans, window fans, air conditioners, was useless that hot summer. How about the next one? All of the colleges that I attended, Yale, Harvard, Columbia, put me in contact with many serious people. Okay, what is the general word there? Can you point to it? Yep, it's this one here, colleges. And you'll see that it is not next to the dash. It's a few words before. Okay, now you give that a try. Write another sample sentence with a dash in it where the general word is a little bit before the dash and the specifics within that dash. Now also give it a try where if you took that dash business out, your sentence should flow smoothly, like all of the colleges that I attended put me in contact with many serious people. Okay, now let's go to the real sophisticated application of the dash. Now, so far, for the most part, we've had individual words within the dash. At the store, I bought food, dash, eggs, bread, cheese, dash, that will taste good tonight. But it doesn't have to be that way. You could have longer phrases like this. All of the people whom I saw on the bus. Okay, that's general. We can't really paint any pictures yet. 
but we have the general. Let's see what's within the dash that does give us these specifics. All of the people whom I saw on the bus, the man with the straggly hair eating a brick of cheese, the little boy who screamed for no reason, the woman with lipstick that covered half of her face, were bothering me that morning. That's good, huh? Okay, you get the idea? Real, vivid, writing longer, sophisticated phrases, but the same principle is happening here. General to specific, the dash is holding those specifics together, and then you resume the sentence. And if you took the dash stuff out, you would have all of the people whom I saw on the bus were bothering me that morning. Okay, next one. Every screech out of my mother's mouth. Jimmy, eat your raw potatoes. Jimmy, is that your little brother's eyeball on the end of those scissors? Jimmy, I think I'll pour hot tar over your head. Made me love her more and more. <laughs> so, same thing going on here. Screech is the general. Dash, specifics. But these are not just individual words, but longer expressions. Yet the same principle is there, and then we resume the sentence. It's good, huh? All right, now you give it a try yourself. Where you don't just have individual words, but longer expressions. For example, off the top of my head, um, in my garage are cars, dash, Ford, Honda, Chevy, dash, that are all crumbling. Okay, that's the individual words. Now come up with longer descriptive phrases, like all the cars in my garage, dash, um, the Chevy Nova with the bumper held up with a bungee cord, um, the Honda Accord with the splintered windshield that the light passes through creating rainbows, and the Ford truck whose radiator whistles somewhere over the rainbow when it gets hot out. <laughs> Dash, we're never going to leave my sight. All right, so see what you can do with that. So that's it for this tutorial on the Mighty Mighty Dash. In this tutorial, we learned what is a dash, what it looks like, how do you make them, what do you do with spaces. We learned that primarily dashes are used when you have a general word and then you are getting more specific within a sentence. You are interrupting the sentence with examples, with a list, and then you resume the sentence, as opposed to a colon where the list comes at the end of the sentence. We also learned that sometimes you might use a dash when there is a striking shift in tone. We learned about the placement of the dash, that sometimes the word, the general word, is right before the dash, and then you enter into the dash with specifics. But that general word can come a few words before the dash as well. And then we also tried our hand at more sophisticated forms of a dash, where it doesn't have to be individual words. It can be long phrases, long quotations. But the principle is the same. You're going from general to specific and then resuming the sentence. Okay, I hope you use this um, punctuation device, the dash, because it really will help your writing become more powerful and more vivid. Okay, bye-bye.